Mid Oil Refining and Petrochemicals Company Limited, a fully indigenous company established to refine crude oil, was floated and duly registered with an authorized share capital of 100 million naira on the 20th of April 2012 by the following promoters. <music> Refining and Petrochemicals Company Limited. Today we want to take you on a journey from our drawing board to Aging Shekuba. On the 28th of September 2008, the dream to start a private refinery was given back to by friends who are currently in the oil and gas business. This is to help alleviate the sufferings of Nigeria in fuel shortage that has been in the country for such a long time. Please come with me to our drawing room and also journey with me to Egypt. Nigeria's population is saddled with a daily consumption of about 32 million liters of PMS. The country's refineries in Kaduna, Wari and Port Harcourt have a combined throughput of 18 million liters per day. This is grossly inadequate to cater to the country's needs. The federal government, in the early part of 2012, made a push for the complete deregulation of the downstream sector. Though this was not achieved, the attempt gave birth to a new government policy that changed the face of the petroleum industry completely and convinced investors that government was willing to lay the necessary foundation. With the dwindling foreign exchange reserve of the government occasioned by fall in crude oil price, funding for product importation has become near impossible. The current administration, therefore, had no alternative but to decap the pump price of PMS, thus encouraging investors to enter into the construction of refineries. Government over the years have dreamt or have wanted to bring in policies that would encourage investors and business entrepreneurs to come into this line of business. But so many things have hampered this dream. Mostly amongst this was the funding of such projects, government's sincerity about giving licenses and encouragement and incentives to such promoters. Government's partial deregulation of the downstream sector in 2012 gave a new flip to the promoters of the company. The search for the appropriate expanse of land to accommodate a refinery of the size being contemplated led them to the ancient town of Ejiri and Shekumba Kingdom in the Ekwe axis of Lagos State. The project size is in excess of 364 hectares of land overlooking the lagoon. One of the major reasons for choosing this location is the fact that a refinery requires waterways to transport a stock of crude oil to the project location, transport the finished product to various locations, and easy access to products, raw materials and feedstocks from outside the country. The waterways leading from Epe, Ejiri, Shekumba to Potocket is an advantage to the project. On 4th May 2012, the Board of Directors of Mid Oil Refining and Petrochemicals Company Limited visited the location to formally request and secure the project site totaling in excess of 364 hectares of land from the communities in Ejiri, Shekumba, Lumodon, Ododuba and Arubo. This formal request for land acquisition was received by Elegiri of Ejiri Kingdom and his wife Olori Mojisola Babatunde Balogun on behalf of other communities in order to harmonize the land allocated. The members of the board of Mid Oil Refining and Petrochemicals Company Limited met with all the community leaders to discuss the future of the relationship that was about to evolve as well as the company's corporate social responsibilities. Not only will the state government benefit in terms of increased revenue generation, 
jobs will be available for the citizens of Lagos State. The communities will benefit from the infrastructural development, hospital facilities, and school centers will also be built as part of its social responsibilities. Questions were put out there by the communities as they would want to know what their fate would be as fishermen, as the community's predominant trade, and would want to know what happens to their mangroves and alternate businesses and jobs to be made available. Members of the board of Mid Oil Refining and Petrochemicals Company Limited assured them of job opportunities for their children especially those who meet conditions of employment. Answers to budding questions were adequately provided and assurances made to the communities for their long-term gains. Members of the board have pledged to the federal and Lagos state governments that a replica of environmental degradation in the oil-rich Niger Delta will not repeat itself at the center of excellence. Mid Oil Refining and Petrochemicals Company Limited's journey to this point of success has been tremendous. Surely, they wouldn't want any unrest to rattle the stability and the progress of the refinery when it takes off. The 24th of January 2017, Mildor and his team did a technical presentation of the proposed refinery, detailing all that needed to be done to establish this project in Lagos State. As is customary in Nigeria during the festive seasons, families converge and exchange gifts. Mid Oil Refining and Petrochemicals Company Limited won't be left behind. In appreciation to communities that have released their lands for use for a project of this magnitude, delegates were sent by the board to present gifts. Special traditional prayers were offered from each community to our company. Immediately after the approval of the license to establish by the Department of Petroleum Resources, Midwell Board of Directors approved the formation of Midwell Planning and Implementation Committee with the mandate to plan, process, implement on the commissioning of the proposed refinery. The committee members are made up of professionals within the oil and gas industry with vast knowledge in crude cocktails, pipeline right-of-way experts, chemical engineers and civil engineers. The creation of the refinery is a supportive one to ensure that uh, all the uh, supporting uh, uh, facilities in terms of refining you won't need to to, to be bringing oil from Britain, America, our, our oil is going to be refined there and then brought back. So double expenses. So we thought that by establishing that one here, it's going to um, do a lot of good to Nigeria. The process of refinery establishment in Nigeria are in three stages namely license to establish, that's the LTE, approval to construct, that's the ATC, and the approval to operate, ATO. To achieve the license to establish, LTE, the following activities are to be undertaken. A pre-feasibility pre study of the refinery in question has to be done, acquisition of adequate land to accommodate the refinery and its ancillaries, has to be achieved, and also DPL inspection of the land and all the facilities and the presentation has to be done. To achieve the ATC stage, the following activities are to be performed. The environmental impact assessment, the EIA, of the acquired land has to be done. The geotechnical and geophysical investigation of the, of the area has to be done because there are areas that are covered by water uh, along the lagoon. Also, the site clearing is also important. Then, front-end engineering design of both the refinery and the pipelines, including the SPM, has to be done as well, including the detailed design DED of both the refinery, the SPM, and the pipeline. Thereafter, DPR inspection and presentation has also is done. 
to achieve the ATO stage, the following activities are to be completed. Procurement of all required equipment and spare parts of the refinery. Fabrication, construction and installation of the refinery plant and the ancillary such as the pipeline SPM and also the tank farm. Thereafter, the commissioning of the installed facility and finally the startup of the refinery plant. The establishment of the refinery in Shekumba, Ijiri, local government uh, council will enhance the supply of refined petroleum products in Lagos State in particular and Nigeria in general. It will enhance the transfer of technologies applied in petroleum refining engineering and create avenues for skills acquisition and job employment. It will open avenues for creation of wealth for individuals and revenue generation for local, state, and federal governments. The project will also open up economic activities in the communities hosting the refinery project. Finally, the main source of energy for the refinery will come from flue gases like methane and the other light gases emanating from the distillation towers. This will represent about 58% of the energy requirement for the plant. Process steam generation from the boilers will contribute a significant portion in the energy mix. This will be about 28%. Electricity will be another significant portion of the energy mix, giving us about 14%. Purchased natural gas will yield greenhouse gases emission uh, like CO2 and hydrogen during combustion. The greenhouse gases emission of CO2 will be routed through the full gas line while hydrogen will be used in the downstream processes, e.g. in the reformer and the desulfurization processes. Nigeria with about 40 crude oil streams presents a great opportunity to apply linear programming models to select a cocktail of crews to minimize the cost of operation. Considering the volatility in the Niger Delta region, processing of crude from outside Nigeria has been considered. In order to receive crude oil into the refinery system, an SBM capable of discharging a very large crude carrier will be constructed offshore the Atlantic Ocean. This SBM is also capable of loading 80,000 metric ton product tanker to serve both local and international markets. Pipeline system will connect the mid oil refinery to the SBM. Crude oil prices pre represent about 60 to 80 percent of refining operating costs, depending on whether crude oil price is low or high. It is therefore very important to choose crude oil with appropriate qualities. The choice of crude oil has a great impact on the selection of equipment and the overall refinery investment cost. As part of company social responsibility, it is pertinent and vital to Mid Oil Refinery and Petrochemicals Limited to implement the Light Up Community Initiative by supporting the adjoining communities that will be affected with a smarter means of electrification through energy efficient means that includes the use of photovoltaic modules, solar panels, inverters, and other alternative means to provide clean, efficient, economic, and reliable energy solutions. This will guarantee savings to middle through reduced fuel consumption and emissions which in turn will reduce the operational cost while increasing the company turnover. As a petroleum engineer with over 30 years experience in oil and gas industry that covers upstream, midstream and downstream of this industry, I am pleased for the opportunity to be part of this initiative which is situated in Lagos State. I have personally reviewed the technical and financial packages of this project and I'm convinced that I've made 
a good investment decision. I would therefore recommend this investment to all my colleagues and friends that this is an investment that will bring value for money indeed. Mid Oil Propo Refinery will assist the federal government in the provision of refined products, thereby creating job opportunities and revenue generation to both the federal and labor state government. The setting up of Mid Oil Refinery will alleviate the inherent problems of fuel shortages which were perennial around Christmas period and the New Year. The aims and objectives are to solve not only the fuel shortage problems, but also to improve the economic lives of the people of Lagos State. This middle landable project is well cited within Ejuni Sekuba in EcoC Ejuni Local Council Development Area of Equa Division in Lagos State. Um, it has a, one of the lowest population density in the state which makes it suitable for this project. The site is accessible from Ikorodu Axis through Itoki Road and also through Leki Axis. You can, you can also access the site from Ijebode in Ogun State. The proposed international airport is just across the lagoon from the refinery site while the Leki Seaport is within the Leki Free Trade Zone. The 364 hectares of land was allocated by the Lagos State Government for a refinery and a mixed-use development. The site will accommodate the refinery, the town farms, and the housing estates. The proposed refinery is designed to produce 100,000 barrels per day. Other facilities within the proposed refinery are primary and secondary schools, fire service stations, loading gantry, crude oil and finished products tanks and other ancillary uses. The tank farms. A total of 10 tank farms are to be leased out to prospective investors. Each tank farm is on a 5 hectares of land, big enough to accommodate all articulated vehicles. The mid oil housing estate has the following. You have the golf course, you have the boat club, you have places of worship, you have fire station, you have commercial area, then you have the security pools and other amenities that will make the estate livable. The project, when completed, will generate good returns on investment, create more job opportunities and taxes for the government. Middle Refining and Petrochemical Company Limited, conscious of the legal imperative of a commercial and technical venture of this magnitude, ensure that middle planning and implementation committee have the benefit of sound legal advice on every aspect of the proposed modular refinery project on behalf of middle board of directors mpic members middle interim staff we thank you for your support so far we extend our appreciation to our host communities of Egeri, shekumba lumodon ododuba and arubo for their support whenever required. We promise to continue regular updates of the project until commissioning. Thank you and God bless. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Peace and harmony in Lagos State.